Greetings, welcome back. Let's go ahead and finish the application of principles of moment of inertia. So we still have to find theta p and theta p2. Also have to find i2 and i1. I x, I y, I x y. All right. So let's go ahead and find I x. To find I x, which is the mass moment of inertia about the x axis. In other words, in other words, the rotation of of this whole body about the x-axis. We want to rotate everything about the x-axis. So if you can imagine this whole body rotating, this whole body rotating about the x axis so it will rotate about the x axis you know, to, to form something like this But, okay, yeah, just rotate this entire thing about the x-axis. Okay, so to get the mass moment of inertia of the entire body will break well will also break down the moment the mass moment of inertia into its componental mass moment of inertia so ix will be the mass will consist of the mass moment of inertia of of shape one plus the mass moment of inertia of shape two. In other words, all we have to do is just find the mass moment of inertia of shape one about about the x axis. About this is the x axis, so about that axis. It's like a it's sort it's a moment. That's why it says mass moment of inertia so a moment has an axis about which it rotates or an axis of rotation so in this case that axis is x and the object is one in this case the axis is x and the object is two that subscript one indicates the shape or object that we are rotating about the x-axis all right so all i have to do is is get this get that add them up and then we have a mom mass moment of inertia for the whole composite body so let's go ahead and do that and get ix1 so ix1 what is i what is one what is object one i x object one mass moment of object one we know that object one is this guy here this is object one the red the red rectangle all 
So I want to know what is the mass moment of inertia of that object when it is rotated about the x-axis. So we are simply just rotating this guy about this axis. So that's the axis of rotation. So if we do that, what will happen is that this guy will, rot will rotate. Okay, just imagine that this is the path of rotation of that point. Okay, we'll have that one there. We'll also rotate like that. And this one will also rotate. To form what is this what will it form yeah this will sweep a solid a solid disk of thickness t so it will just form a solid disk of thickness t nice huh yep solid disk of thickness t will be formed when this rotates about the x-axis Okay, cool. Now, since since it's a rectangle, we already know that the, the mass moment of inertia of a rectangle about an axis that passes at the edge. We know that we're given a formula for that. This is T. So, normally the formula is Bez h cubed over 3. In this case, we said base. In this case, our base for this is t. Our base is t, so replace that with t. th and our h is a. That's our height. Replace that with a. And we are done. So, this this will give us what fifteen multiplied by one fifty the power three divided by three okay for i x two I x two Okay. Uh, I x two All right. Get a different marker. I x two will be yeah. There's our x axis runs through the edge as well. So take the parallel side, which is b minus t, and then multiply it by the height, which is t. Then raise that height to the cube power, since it's running at the edge. Divide that by 3. Okay, so we know that this is 85. 85 multiplied by 15 to the power 3 divided by 3. Okay, that should give us x, i, x. Okay, how much does this give us? 
150 first one gives us 16.8 at eight times 10 to the power 6 millimeter to the fourth power the next one gives us Ninety-five point six three times ten to the power three millimeters to the fourth power. Then we can just add this. So I x one plus I x two gives us. Ninety five point six three gives us sixteen sixteen point nine seven times ten to the power six millimeters to the fourth power. Okay. Go ahead and we do this we do the same. For I Y right I Y will be I what am I doing? I Y one plus i y two and for i y one so now we are rotating it about about the y okay Yeah, so we're rotating everything about the Y now. If we rotate shape one about the Y, this will be the base. The base will change to be A and the height will be Y. So it's a rectangle. We use the same formula. So the formula being base times height to the third power divided by three plus base times height power divided by three for two as well. This will be for two. This is for one. What do we know? We know that B1, the base here, has changed to B A. So the base is A. Since the base is A, we can write A and the height is the thickness, which is T to the power 3 divided by 3. Height, height is the thickness. Since this is our axis of consideration, this is our axis and the height is T, which is 15. 
So we raise that to the power 3. I t to the power 3 divided by 3 plus we look at shape shape 2 the base now changes to yeah for shape 2 this has to be corrected as you can see for shape 2 the axis is not running it's not passing at the edge look at this This is the axis, and this is shape 2. Shape 2 ends there, it's not touching the axis, so there's a distance here of t. In other words, we need to use a theory called parallel axis theorem to transfer the mass moment of, of shape 2 to the y axis. That's fine, we can do that. And to do that, let's change this. Okay, we'll change this to, to be, right, using the parallel axis theorem. Let's that start mass moment. mass moment at the centroid of the object plus okay so we know that mass moment at the centroid of a rectangle if you have a rectangle and you have an axis that passes there now let's say this was x and the distance here was d1 so this is the center to get ix you need to first get your mass moment of inertia about the center ixc then use the transfer theorem which is the part of parallel axis to transfer that mass moment of inertia to this to the axis parallel to, to the centroidal ax, x x yeah centroidal x axis so in that to do that we would say ixc plus area of the shape multiplied by d squared that's what we're going to do and we know that ixc for a rectangle is b h cubed over 12 b being the base and h being the height cool so and d area times d being the distance between the axes squared all right okay so yeah so that's that's what we have to do here All right so let's do that let's do that to do that we know the okay the base now is t it's t the thickness of the base is t and the height is b minus t Okay, so we'll do that. We'll say okay, base is t, uh, height is b, okay, base is t, height is b minus t to the power 3 divided by 12 plus area b minus t multiplied by t multiplied by the distance between the axes which is 
which is d squared the distance is d between the axes Oh no, nope. the distance is actually not t. The distance is t plus. Distance is t plus plus b over t divided by two. B minus t divided by two. What am I saying? Yeah. So that's that's the distance, which is b over two plus t over two. Let's change this. The distance is b over two plus t over two squared. Okay. So t b minus t cubed over 12 plus b minus t t b plus t over 2 squared. And all of that Okay, all of that, okay. Now we know that, just substitute values. Now we know what A is. A is 150 multiplied by, what is T? T is 15 to the power three divided by three plus what is T? That is 15, that is at five power three divided by 12 plus 85 multiplied by 15 uh, plus 115 over 2 squared and that should give us 150 times 15 to the power 3 divided by 3 plus 15 times 85 to the power 3 divided by 12 plus 85 times 15 times 115 divided by 2 all of these to the powers 2 so that gives us i y as 5.151 at 7 Let's just leave it at three or four significant figures to the power no, ten to the power six millimeters the fourth power. Alright, so that's IY and uh we have IY, we have IX. Now let's get one crucial piece of the puzzle. Another crucial piece of the puzzle, that is to say. Okay, this is misbehaving. That is to say. Okay. Let's get 